check one, two, check. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two, check one, two. Check one, two, check, check, check. Is that better? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think we've got it now. I think we've got it. So let me share this. Um, Well, never mind. This is not going to be worth sharing <laughs> right now. So I'm just going to just soldier on with it. So, hey, guys, it's still quiet. Okay. Well, that I can fix. That I can fix. Check one, two. Is that better? Is that louder? Okay. All right, guys. So I'm clipping my mic now. Check one, two. Okay. I think this will work. I think this will be good enough for the stream. So I'm going to turn off the monitoring, monitoring of YouTube. And um, we're going to get this started. So basically, what I hope to do today is walk you guys through designing a circuit and designing a circuit board eventually if we can get to that um that stage um of the design in an hour so basically <clears throat> i think what we're going to do is work on the schematic first and then if we get to it we are going to uh we'll, we'll get to the pcb design in time but is, is everyone here? Does it sound okay? You guys ready to get started? <laughs> I hate that the links and everything um, that I that I had uh, shared are now dead. <laughs> but hopefully anybody that wants to find it can can come find it on uh, on uh, YouTube. <clears throat> so I think for the circuit that I'm going to work on, we're gonna just do a really simple color sound one knob fuzz. So the color sound one knob fuzz is essentially um, a fuzz face with the gain maxed out and just a volume control. So you're kind of just omitting the you're just omitting the the gain potentiometer, the circuit, uh, fixing it with um, a resistor and whatnot and um, then you can just control the output. Um, I've never built one of these for myself. I've helped do some layouts uh, for people uh, with this circuit, but never one just for me. So, but thanks for joining me. I hope this is interesting and I hope this looks okay on your end. Um, <clears throat> so, 
I am going to try to orient everything where I can see everything. <laughs> so basically what I've got here um, is my eagle schematic. And what I'm going to do first is basically draw the schematic, start laying out the components, and, um, you know, we're just going through the motions of how I approach doing a circuit board, although this is going to be... Uh, through hole. Normally I'm doing stuff with surface mount, but that's neither here nor there. The, the ideas are um, still the same. So let's get started. I, I apologize that you can't see my cursor, um, but for whatever reason, OBS doesn't want to show it with a Mac, um, and that's really annoying. So here we go. So can you guys see? Hopefully you can see. I have this window on the top right of the screen. These are all my parts. These and, and just some things that I've selected for this um, design. So this should work fine. And then on the, the left side of the screen, that's going to be where I'm drawing the schematic. So uh, we're going to start with some supply pins. This is going to be like the, the pad for in and out and whatnot. Um, and the ground connection and all that stuff. So let's see. What all do I need? I'm going to need the input of the circuit, the LED, the ground connection, and the output. So instead of using a supply pin necessarily, I'm going to use a header pin. So header pins are just like small pads that are spaced out evenly that you can use ribbon, cable, uh, ribbon cables, but you can also use just normal cables or wires um, to connect to everything. So I'm just going to use pretty standard pin connection here. And I, you know what? Actually, let's not do, let's don't do that because that's, <laughs> that's normally how I design things and I use some other tricks to make that work. So let's not do that. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it the old fashioned way where we have just a pin. So, okay. Here's our input. I'm going to put one over here, turn it around. That's a left click or a right click rather make the output. Uh, I am going to add a ground pin. Uh, actually we'll make that round ground pin. Let's put it up here. Boom. And then we need a pin for power and ground as well, but we can use a, a separate part of this library for that. And uh, we need the LED connection. So we'll just start tacking some of those things up here. Um, right. So what, how I like to start is kind of like laying out my pins um, for all the ins and outs. This is, you know, how I, I begin to lay out the, the, the schematic. And you can always uh, move these. Nothing is set in stone. And uh, in the description after I get done with the stream, <clears throat> I'll probably post, um, I'll, I'll, try, I'll try my best to post some links to these libraries that I'm using. Uh, most, of, most of them are readily available online and stuff. Uh, so burr, burr, burr. there's a ground connection. Let's, let's make our ground. So that's there. And uh, actually, let's do one more pad. I want to use a square pad in here. Zoom in a little bit. This might be better anyway. Um, square pad for my power and this is this is the boring part just getting all your ins and outs kind of started uh, so I'm going to add that square pad is going to be my 9 volt I want to add that 9 volt connection here boom and I think we're ready to start 
drawing this the schematic. So I have it pulled up on my phone uh, from the classic Beavis Audio website. I'll try to link this in the description as well. And I'm just going to redraw this uh, in Eagle, and hopefully we can transition this over into a board. Uh, so how I usually approach laying my components is I'll do kind of everything at once. I'll do all my caps and then uh, all my resistors and transistors, pots, and kind of just space them out. And then I draw the connection around there. Uh, and <clears throat> as far as questions go, I'll open it up at the end about questions. So if you have a question, please like just think about it, <laughs> write it down, and then tell me after the fact. So let's use these small box caps. I think all the caps in this circuit, save for one electrolytic, should fit within the size. Here we go. Okay, so the beauty of Eagle is that it names these components for you. You don't have to keep track of that. Most of the time, sometimes when you make your own, um, it will, uh, things can get kind of funny <laughs> uh, when, when you're naming stuff. All right, so those are the three film style caps, well, box caps. And there's one electrolytic. Um, these electrolytic shapes, usually down here, you're going to see the lead spacing and the, di the diameter of the, the cap. That's important because you need to know that. It's a really annoying thing when you get, you buy a cap that is huge. <laughs> And uh, it, it fits through the, the pads, but it actually takes up more space than the little circle uh, allows. And um, then you have components being crammed in, and that's never, that's never fun. Okay, so there's our four caps. I'm going to go ahead and name these. And uh, maybe I should say more or less what I'm doing. When I'm adding a part, over here on the left, you see this little component with a plus that says add part, and that's where I'm going to pull up my component library. Uh, to, to give value to something, on the left, you'll see these two little um, buttons. One has uh, 10K with a line above it, and it says value when you hover over it. You click that, and then you can click your components and start adding um, your values. So we've got a 0.1 UF cap. We have a 220 picofarad cap. And then we have a 0.22 UF cap. And then this one is a 10. And there we go. So now that those caps are in place, let's go ahead and rough in the resistors. So go to your library, go to your resistors, boom. Uh, we'll use this one, this six millimeter spacing. Um, that's usually fine if you're making these things yourself. If you ever want to use a, um, uh, well, I don't know if that's six millimeter spacing, but that's like right at the body of the resistor. If you need a little wider or want to get into using a, a lead bender, like a manual cranking lead bender, um, you need to use a, a wider spacing. So I'll just go ahead and use this one. It's right to the body. It's fine for what we're doing. And then again, just following along with my schematic here um, and trying to place things relative, relative to where they are and retaining the uh, component number. So the, the, you know, R1 is in the same spot on the schematic as it is on this picture, which is, makes your life easier when you're going back to try to, you know, work on these things. Okay, R4, uh, R5, and that's it. The reason I chose this, this, um, Oops. This circuit is it's very, very easy 
uh, to draw. It's not a lot of components. All right. Now, and th again, this is just my method. I, I like to, some people will probably draw and trace everything out as they go. I tend to lay things out on a simple circuit like this, all loosey-goosey. Now, transistors. These, uh, most of the time they're using a, an MPN sort of transistor. So I have these 2N222 uh, transistors pulled up. Either of these, I don't know why they're even different. Just the different values of the um, the transistor. I guess there's a one with an A, um, but same part. Uh, you know, it's, you know, same footprint, same everything here. So, and, and this, you know, you can put a different transistor in there. But it, let's say you're going to use a metal can uh, transistor for this that has the little little pip on the edge to orient it. Uh, let's use these. Now we'll get Q1 in here, Q2, boom. Uh, I'll go back and give all these resistors value in just a second. But while we're at it, we're going to put our last part in. Uh, we're going to put a pot. And actually, looks like I don't have any pots in here. So let me pull up Eagle, my Eagle library, and uh, add that real quick. You're probably not going to be able to see this because I don't have that window uh, selected to show you guys. Boom, here we go. All right. We're making good time. This is good. Okay. So there's that pot. I went and added that to my library. Uh, you can tell it to use something. And um, this library has a bunch of different types of connections for pots, and I've modified these. One thing, you, if you ever start working on circuits uh, and designing PCBs and whatnot, one thing you always need to keep in mind is that the measurements of components, especially something like a pot, um, they vary. So <clears throat> after I kind of settled in on the brand pots that I use, I um, measured it with a caliper to make sure that the drawing in my library file matched my actual parts. So that helps with doing the drill layout and all that stuff. Because uh, there's nothing worse than having a, a component that you think is going to fit, and then you make a circuit board, get the circuit board, start putting parts on it, and nothing fits. Or, you know, worse, they they hit each other, or when you try to put it into an enclosure, it, none of the holes line up. It's it's a nightmare. So we're just going to use this this uh, 16 millimeter pot. Check my orientation. That is all good. Boom. So that's the output side of things. Um, I'm going to bring this pin in, move that closer here. And now the basic, um, the, all the components are here. So what I'm going to do is go in and start adding the values um, to all my components. So let's see, we got 10K, 82 ohm. Two point two K, hundred fifty K, and one K. And we need to add value for this pot, which we can do. Uh, this is a five hundred K A, and we all also can rename it because this, you know, when you place this pot, it just says pot one, which is fine. But this is our volume, so let's just name it volume. There we go. So now. All of our components are named, valued, and basically where they need to be. So we're going to start drawing this stuff. So let me zoom in a little bit. We're going to start making the connections here. So basically, in the latest version of Eagle, or at least the version I have, which is um, <clears throat> 9.6.2, which I don't know what version they're on now, but this is more recent, and I think it should be fairly consistent. Uh, I know uh, Eagle is kind of being absorbed by Fusion 360, but you can still get Eagle. So, it, Tyler Hall, this is basically a fuzz face. Yeah. Yeah, the color sound uh, one knob fuzz is essentially a fuzz face without a gain control. The gain's just fixed. The beauty of this newer version of Eagle is that um, 
it does a lot of the hard work for you and a lot of the little things like adding a junction you'll see okay I put this here boom it makes the junction the little circle you need to you need to have that so you know that this tr this um, connection is made here it's not going over it uh, usually you see that with a little like a half circle I keep doing things with my mouse and you can't see that okay so that connection goes there this is going to the oops click that junction click uh, this is going to the base this transistor one thing I like to do is try my best to keep everything lined up and the beauty of, of Eagle is if you click the little uh, grid what if you guys can even see this um, If you can see this, uh, no, <laughs> you can change the spacing of things, but you just have to trust me. The little button up here, grid, you can change the spacing of components and whatnot. Okay, let me, I have too many windows open. Okay, here we go. Get back on this. <laughs> Boom, okay. So. Oops. Get our um, our net going here. I'll leave that one kind of open because that's where our nine volt connection is going to be. Get all these connected here. Makes a junction. Going to the collector. Why use a 500k a pot in this? Uh, position well this is the output um, the value <sighs> determines more I mean it, it might it might have some impact the circuit might have some impact on the val what value you need to use but just how the taper functions you know and I don't even know if this value is the best value sonically you'd want to use a logarithmic taper on a volume so it doesn't bunch up at the beginning and in a lot of the then the taper is smooth um, but I'm not entirely sure if you can, you might be able to use any value there. I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay. So let's move some of these things, get everything lined up, looking pretty. Uh, we're almost done with this, with the schematic, which is exciting because that means we can start um, our layout and we may not get to the, we may not finish the layout today but maybe about halfway through the stream okay so now that all that's connected the thing we're going to need to connect next will be you know what let's not even worry about having an led connection we're going to make this thing as bare bones as possible so we're just going to worry about our nine volt connection um, and that's it so we're going to add another ground here. And what I just did, you click copy, and then you can click you know, any component or anything on the, the board here and copy it. So I'm going to do that again for these ground connections. So there's a ground connection on this uh, emitter, and then on this oop, resistor, and on this cap, and on this pot. And I think that's all the, that's all our grounds. One thing I like to do just to make sure that you can see that that ground connection is there is pull it farther away from the component itself and you can you can see there was no green net in between that pot and this ground because it overlaps slightly because of the spacing of the components in Eagle. Um, there we go. So there we go. So now all the grounds, I'll double check this one. That one's connected. You can see a little green net there, hopefully. And now the only thing left to do is add the nine volt connection. Put that, oop, put that here. Rename that segment plus nine volts, yes. And now we're all good. So I'm going to, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move these pins and whatnot. You can, you can show you what I'm doing here. You click group, 
draw a little box around everything you want to select. You click move, right click move, and then you say move group, and then you can move this stuff wherever you need it. Um, I'll just move it down here, kind of out of the way. Uh, save, remember to save often. Now I think we should be good to go uh, on the board. So I'm gonna transfer over to the board, click generate switch to, uh, generate slash switch to board up here. Boom, so now I'm on my board. All my components are there. So let me make sure that you guys can see this in the live stream here. So I'm gonna turn off the schematic, turn on the board, look at that. There we go. Actually, there we go. So, now we're looking at the board side of things. Now we're looking at um, the actual PCB. Eagle's default view of the PCB is typically pretty huge. So I'm gonna shrink this um, quite a bit. And actually, we're gonna do that group thing select all of that PCB um, and I'm gonna move it up away from away from this little plus right here uh, where is it ah you can barely see it it's right by that little pad um, but there's a plus and you can't really go you can't put components below that plus um, so Wait, what did I press to transition that? What do you mean? So, okay. So now we got small circuit board, should be fine. And uh, one thing I like to do before I start adding components, because uh, Eagle, you can have drawings basically in your library. Uh, I'm gonna add a part over here and I'm gonna add an enclosure, and this is just a drawing of an enclosure. So let's say we wanna put this in a 125B. Um, I hope you guys can see that. Oh, you can, perfect. 125B enclosure. So I'm gonna add that to uh, my board here. So now you guys should be able to see there is a very light, <laughs> um, uh, a very light outline of a 125B, but that that gives you you know kind of the basics of of y y your restrictions as far as how large your board can be and how you switch from the board view to the schematic view is up here, uh, right by the printer up here. There's a switch to schematic, switch to board, so right by the print. But once you ha have the the PCB laid out or the PCB. Um, you're on the PCB view on the board view and you have the, the enclosure there, you can stretch this thing to where it's gonna fit and give you all the room you could ever need. And there you go. Uh, so that's, that's rather long and chances are this, this board will not have to be this big. I'm also gonna go in here and turn on uh, the grid display. So, yeah, so you can be able to see that. So as I zoom in here, this just helps align components, right? So, uh, zoom out, and I'm gonna start placing the components. We'll start with the pot. We'll just say this thing has, you know, one knob up here. So that's, mm, I think the PCB is, too tall, so let's make it a little shorter. Bring it down to where it's about here. All right. So now one thing, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this in the stream, but at the very bottom of the screen, um, zoom in on all this stuff, boink. Um, when you hover over a component, or click a component, it will say, uh, what its name is. So one thing I should have done is gone in and renamed these so I know which is which without having to switch back and forth. So I'm gonna actually go back to my schematic. Let's pull that up. Turn this PCB viewer off. Oh, <laughs> and let's name these things, let's see. 
rename rename this oops rename this pin in okay and I'm going to rename this pin out and we're going to name this pin ground name this pin 9v wait plus 9v and rename this last ground pin just g because you can't have two things with the same name go back to the board view there we go so now I'm going to be able to see uh, what the names of these these pads are there's my nine nine volt so let's put that up near the top there's a ground so let's put that up near the top because you're going to need one up there uh, ground let's put one of those near the bottom here out that over here and in we'll put that over here so I hope you guys can see all these these air wires as well yeah okay they're showing up so now that we have all of that the next thing I typically like to do is just and it's it's not elegant but I just grab all the components again we use that group tool grab move right click move group and just kind of throw them all on the PCB uh, I'm, in fact, I'm going to turn off all these uh, values and um, I'm going to turn off the names just to keep everything clear and, and clean looking. So now that I have all the components there, I never, well, I typically, I don't draw uh, the, the, the wires or the connections for the ground. I, I do a ground pour uh, and you do that over here on the left with the polygon tool. So, I'm going to click the polygon tool. I want to make it into just a right angle for the bend. And then outline, actually, I want to increase the size of this width. I want to increase it to, let's just increase it to 0 0.02 here. Actually, that's too big. <laughs> let's do 0 0.01. And I'm just going to draw a box around the dimensions of my PCB and for signal name you write G N D ground and now you have a box that when you click rat's nest boom all of the ground connections are now connected so you see uh, on the pot on one of these resistors on the transistor there's like a little cross going through that pad that means that's connected to the ground plane and so what that does is that eliminates the need to have to connect those, those connections manually with a trace. So now that I have that, I'm going to start to draw all these, um, all these, these, these traces. We'll just I'm trying to do it all on the top, make it as simple of a PCB uh, as possible. Actually, let's do them all on the bottom. Keep that ground plane on the top, do all the traces on the bottom. So <clears throat> you can see, because we know this is in, right? Actually, let's go ahead and name that. Let's click the text tool uh, in, change that to top name. So it brings the names back, but that's okay. We're gonna change the size down to, let's say 0 0.04. I can't move it where I want it. So we're gonna change it, make this grid a little smaller. In. Okay. While we're at it, we'll go ahead and put out. Put that over. That's too big. It won't fit in the box. Let's make it a little smaller. Out. Okay. So it's not elegant, but it's there. It works. <clears throat> right? So now that we have this in connection, we can start to see how the components are connecting with these little air wires. So I'm going to start moving these components. laying them out in such a way that the connections are as short as possible and everything kind of makes sense. It's easy to build too. So, okay. This is the part that, uh, <laughs> you know, it takes a little while. It takes a little, it takes a little practice. So I'm just going to try to move things away from each other, turn them and get them where they need to be. Let's put this transistor over here. Let's put this one 
over here and let's start moving some stuff around. So the output's coming out of the, the, the middle lug, the second lug of the volume pot. So let's go ahead and route that trace. We're just gonna go change the wire bin to uh, angle. You press, um, sorry. You can press Command Z to undo stuff, just like you know, just like if you were typing in Word. So now we have our output. So that's out of the way. Um, <clears throat> now we're gonna turn, get back over here at the input side of things. So I think C1 and C2 are probably fine where they are. You can rotate it to change. You, you, know, you can see that the air wires start to change. Go ahead and get this trace routed for the input. Get rid of that air wire. Now you can see the C2 is going over here to these, these resistors. Let's see what's going here. That's going there. It's also connected to C2. And this is basically just the, the, the puzzle aspect of it. And I enjoy this a lot. Uh, we only have about 20 minutes left, so I hope we have enough time to start tackling, um, <clears throat> or to, to really tackle this, um, this design. But what I'm trying to do is turn everything in such a way that air wires aren't crossing over themselves if they don't have to, and that everything is kind of spaced out evenly, oops, in an attractive way. Because it, it, you know, to me it matters. So it's really hard to see these air wires. Actually, I may let's ch let's change the color of these air wires to something or this unrouted stuff to something a little bit more obvious. How about bright pink? Is that easier to see? Yes. Okay. I think that looks a little better. Are you just trying to have less overlapping leads? Yes, yeah, you just want, you kind of want to be able to see um, how the signals are, are routed. So you can see as I'm turning, as I'm turning Q1 here, how the wires are being connected. And I kind of like how you can see this trace coming up to here. It's not going over anything. This one, this trace is going down to, where does this come to? R4. So maybe able to move that over here and make a better connection. So actually, uh, let's see. I got a plan. That's connected over here. That's connected right here. I like to have it where the transistors are also, you know, still looking nice, <laughs> uh, which is sometimes easier said than done. Keep moving everything, sliding everything around, making everything pretty. Okay. You know, this isn't bad. This isn't bad. And the beauty of, you know, doing this on a circuit board is you have a top and a bottom layer to route things. Uh, I see Grant from Big Ear is here, Keith from 5 Watt World's here. All the cool people. Am I cool now? I don't think I am, but we'll see. Okay, so now you can see I'm just kind of routing all the connections, trying to clean everything up to where, oops, uh, Command-Z, Control-Z, undo, to where it's nice and clean, nice and simple, where you can kind of like trace what the circuit's doing or where the connections are anyway. So that is going all the way over there. So let's just, burp. there we go. And you see when this, when these things start to happen, how everything starts to clean up. These little air wires go away. Things start to make more sense. This connection is, you can't, you can see Eagle wants to auto route this and make it uh, go over that trace. But what you can do, you press spacebar, boom. Now we're on the top layer. Go over here, clean that up. That's a little close, even though those are on different layers. I don't like, I like them to 
have a little bit of room to breathe so we can move some of these things around here. Press that space bar again, we'll go back to the bottom layer. Okay, connect that C3. Um, <clears throat> get this connection. Q2, C4. Now we just have a few more connections and this thing's almost done, you know, and we're, we're almost there. Uh, see, I don't like this. I don't like how kind of having to go around. Like, this is bad. See, that's ugly. Don't like that. So instead of doing that, it's going to add a little bit longer of a, a trace. Move it down here. And boom, there we go. Now, uh, after you do that, let's move this trace a little bit, give it a little bit of room. And I think, I think we've got a layout. <clears throat> I think that we could have this uh, printed and done. Yeah, okay. So, save it again. Always save. I didn't even save enough on there, but everything's routed. Let me back up a little bit. You can click this uh, zoom select tool up at the top and draw a box and it'll zoom in on that, just that portion of the PCB. So now that we have that zoomed in, we can click this rat's nest again. There we go. Now we see that uh, it looks like everything, all the grounds connection. I don't see any air wires, but to check that, what you do I don't know if it'll pull it up. Uh, let me let me see if I can show the screen here. Yeah, there we go. You go up to this little. Oh, I hate how they do this. This little uh, errors uh, button, which is like a yellow triangle with an exclamation point in it. You click that. It pulls up an error checker, which you can't see, but it doesn't show any errors, so that's good. <clears throat> okay. So where's the ground on Q1 going? So this, this big red box that you see that, that kind of encompasses everything, that's all the ground connections together. So it's one big gigantic ground connection. And what you what what this is called is a ground pour. And that essentially just connects everything. Um, that you know, some people use it for their power. I don't, uh, I I don't know, I just I just don't. Um, it, it, I've heard pedals that have it and it doesn't cause a problem, but I don't know. Uh, I just try to only use it for grounds. Uh, you can do this on both the top and the bottom layer, but um, yeah, so all the grounds are connected. There's no, you don't have to draw those traces. And because there's so much room in between the resistors and the caps that there's enough space for the ground pour to like flow through this and, and this is a simple circuit on more complicated circuits sometimes you have to draw vias and things but for this not necessary but when you use uh, on the left there's a rip up tool right by the uh, the route air wire tool you can go to rip up and you can't see it because when you when you run the rat's nest it goes away but if you kind of know where you outlined that polygon for your ground pour you can click it once it'll highlight it click it again and the um the ground pour goes away, but it's really helpful and really handy. So, I mean, essentially we've pretty much done it. Uh, the last thing I would do <clears throat> is since we, since we have this, we don't really need this enclosure thing anymore. So we'll go down and find the delete tool, um, delete, click that little blink. No notification. I went live again. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I don't, I, I'm still learning. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so let's we deleted that that enclosure. So now we just we just have the PCB here. And let's add some more text. One thing you can do is up here on the top left you have layer settings. You can turn on and off layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn uh, oops, turn on and off the traces. So you just have the pads. <clears throat> Get back to our text tool. Let's see, plus nine. V, we'll have that. Change that to top name. Zoom in a little bit so we can get it in the box. Ah, doesn't want to fit. Um, 
So what you can do, if things don't fit, up here on the top left, by the layer settings, you have grid. And grid is just the spacing, the grid that you see on the screen here. Uh, and what you can do is change the size of the grid, and I usually reduce it. Um, you can reduce it to as fine as you want. Sometimes it's not really necessary, but I am going to make it pretty small here so we can... Um, yeah, it basically disappears. So I can put these these components or these these la layer names or sorry these pad names, jeez, wherever I want. So now that we have that. I'm gonna do a ground. Even that's a little too big. Let's make that smaller using the size. Uh, that's too small. <laughs> there we go. Ground and I have it since that. Whenever you click that, it'll make another one. Okay, so that handles that. These are a little big still, so you can actually right-click those, go to properties, and change their size. Um, I'm gonna do that. You can't probably can't see that, but it's gonna make everything smaller. Uh, I hate how big that N is, so we'll click the properties and change that yet again. Uh, boom, okay. I'm gonna line all these up. There we go. Go back and increase that grid size so everything's, uh, you can see that grid again. Turn these layers back on. What are the, on the blue traces, what does the NXX numbers mean? Uh, yeah, Jesse at Rootech, those are the node names. Yeah, you don't have to worry about it. It's just the, the name of that signal. And you can go in and actually, if you wanted to, and sometimes this is handy, uh, on the left, you'll see the R2 with a line under it name. Uh, tool and you can actually click that and now it's saying new name uh, because it's normally in dollar sign eight and you could say this is your output because that's the output and it'll rename that output and um, no switch pad necessary well this is this is assuming you go as rudimentary as possible so literally the only things the only pad connections I have on here are the in, the out, you, a ground f to go to your foot switch, or anywhere really, a ground for your DC jack and the nine volt for your power jack. Um, you can totally add as many connections for a switch as possible. You can use a header. Um, you can, you know, some people have a supply in their supply uh, library will have things that are already labeled. Uh, for you know LED and all that stuff, but this is just for bare bones. There's not even a, an LED connection on here, no LED resistor. But one last thing, just to kind of clean this up, because sometimes uh, different libraries, depending on who made them, they use different fonts for the components, and I, it's always so annoying to me. So I'm going to turn, excuse me, the top and bottom layers off again. So we're just seeing the component names, uh, the top names. And I'm actually going to decrease this grid size. We're going to line all this stuff up and make it pretty. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is over here on the left and change. You click change. You go to font uh, and just pro uh, proportional. And now you have this where you can change the font. So I'm not changing anything on C2, but watch R1. Boom. Different font, different font. So now all the fonts are going to be consistent. And since there's so few components, we can just go ahead and do this. I know the stream's going to have to end here in just a second. But one last thing you can do is go back to that change tool. Uh, you can go to size, and you can change the basically the font size. So I'm going to see, uh, that's too small, <laughs> about changing these to where they're all basically the same. Uh, it's probably going to make it point, point zero 0.04. Yeah, okay. So now... All these component names are going to be the same size. Does it matter? No. Is it pleasing? Yes. And then lastly, I'm going to go in here and we're going to move all the little names. I'm going to make this um, the grid even smaller. We'll move all these names to where they are in a, in a nice location here. And everything kind of lines up pretty. I mean, ultimately, these are being covered up by 
your um, components, so you'll never see it. But it's really annoying when you do all this work and then for whatever reason, uh, your component name is half in a pad or underneath something else and you can't read it. Uh, really, 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 really annoying. But that's it. Let me save it. Um, and turn on the top and bottom layer again. And we'll go ahead and bring this grid back up. And that's it. So cool, I'm gonna save that. And uh, that's the most bare bones 45 minute version of how to, to get into circuit board design that um, that I could possibly think of. <laughs> um, I know this isn't the most interesting thing in the world and I know that you guys would probably be more curious to watch stuff about pedals or you know things but this is you know this is fun and this these are things that I really uh, enjoy working on and sharing because I do get a lot of questions about how to use Eagle and I am by no means an expert uh, for controlling spitty how spitty the fuzz is where would you add a bias pot so for something like this um, let me pull that schematic back up uh, where's OBS? I have too many windows open. Um, you're probably going to be looking at changing R3 with a, uh, uh, with a trim pot. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure what value, maybe just like 5k. So, <clears throat> Why do traces never run at right angles? I've never, you know, I, I always hear people say that you should, you know, kind of ease into um, a turn. <laughs> so this is only Sun's reunion tour. Oh man, uh, this is a color sound wood knob fuzz. So basically a fuzz face. Hey Jordan. Um. So, but yeah, the. Um, for, for setting a bias trimmer, you could do, uh, I think, a trim pot in R3. I think that'd be the way to go. Of course, you know, if you wanted to, you could add a trimmer. Uh, you could probably make R5 a trimmer, and then you'd have an internal gain control. Uh, but, yeah, you know. Um, but this is, uh, this is basically how it goes. So thanks for hanging, guys. Let me... Uh, uh, let me hide some of this stuff. Let me get OBS going. Go back to this. I need to hide my... Um, I need to hide my closet. I need to hang something over there. Um, on this circuit as well, where on the PCB would you be hooking up the in and out project? So on this circuit, you'd be assuming that you would just route that to the foot switch manually. Um, doing some old school circuit board connections, doing a lot of, of, of work. Uh, so I'm glad you guys enjoys, enjoyed this. Um, if you are, you know, at home working or whatever, go watch um, that pedal show live. If they're doing it, uh, my apologies for the intro of the stream. I feel like uh, OBS didn't connect to YouTube. I never turned anything off last night. I just left, I mean, I turned my camera off, but in, in my, my Apollo, but I didn't turn off any of my software. So I think it, um, uh, like I needed to reconnect it when I switched on my Apollo. Really annoying. Sorry for that. That's 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 annoying. Um, but uh, but yeah, thanks for hanging, guys. Uh, every Monday, I'm gonna try to do this. I'm gonna leave this up. So if you want to watch it and uh, try your hand at, at some design, um, I'll try to post links to um, the libraries I use if if they're still up. I think they are um, to this. Uh, schematic from Beavis Audio, which I think is probably, I think Beavis Audio is back, but the schematic. And uh, yeah, thanks for hanging. I hope you have a great week, great day. And uh, yeah, take it easy, guys. Have a good one.